something? Test. Test to see if uh, the mic is picking up well enough. If not, then I can start right here. Do you hear anything? Is the music coming through on the game? Too loud. Is it too loud? No, no, no. Okay. no, I'm just saying when you lift it, it comes through loud. Like that and everything, so I just find it. Okay, this is a test to see how the audio is compared to the becoming moment. Just a few moments, we're setting up here, making sure everything is running. Okay, uh, well, welcome to Shmup Sundays. Uh, today uh, we're uh, we're playing we're playing a shmup, kind of. Uh, it is a shooting game. It's a versus shooting game uh, that actually means quite a bit to me, uh, to be honest. Um, pretty selective about games that I call my uh, favorite. You know, everybody's got their top five, their top ten, names that are important to them for whatever reason. And, you know, everybody's got their own list. I have a kind of a small list of names that I, I attribute that award to. Um, this is one that's extremely important to me. It's a game called Star Control 2, uh, also known as the Earthborn Master. It's actually the handle that I use in a lot of online interaction, uh, Earthborn Master 042. Uh, this was a brilliant game made back in 1992, I believe. I didn't play it until it was on the 3DO, so I was late to the party. Uh, but uh, there is an, a, an astonishing story mode to the game. Uh, but that's not what we're really going to be focusing on tonight. Uh, but uh, I implore you to search this game out, find it, play it. Uh, it is free now. You don't have to even pay for it. Uh, if you go to, uh, just go to Google, search uh, the Urquan Masters, it'll come right up, download it, you'll be playing the same thing we're going to be playing tonight. Uh, before we get started though, I uh, just want to let everybody know we are still giving away a free game if we reach 50 followers. We actually have the counter on the upper left hand corner of the screen. We're currently at, restart the laptop. We're currently at 34 out of 50. Uh, if you uh, if you do follow us tonight, we'll see that on there. And if we get to 50, uh, whoever is in our uh, chat uh, could win could win a free game. So if you have any friends or anybody else that you think might be into this, um, please let them know. Invite them over. Right? Get you know get them to follow our Twitch feed because. We do take it very seriously, as you can see, we've upgraded everything about our feed. It's very important to us, and we see the support for the things that we do, because uh, we do this all for you. So, uh, but if we do get to that goal, 
give away a free game. But for right now, let's check out some Star Control. Now, we do have our controllers uh, all set up here. Basically, we're using USB controllers on a PC. Uh, makes it as easy as possible to play the game. Uh, but we're going to be playing Super Melee. Uh, basically, this is where we can... Uh, well, we can pick any of the... Well, hold, hold on. Um, I'll explain in just a moment. Uh, we can pick any of the ships from the game with their pros and weaknesses, uh, um, balance or unbalance, and we battle each other, and we can have a team of up to 14 ships. Each ship is awarded a total score allotment representative of, uh, say, their power. Um, so the most powerful ship in the game is uh, 30 versus 10. Um, some people use that point allotment to decide how strong their overall team is. What you see there. Uh, right now, they're set on balance team, balance team too. So you got 186 per. But some, when you play in tournaments, maybe they'll limit it to two 300 point teams. So you have to get a team that's worth it. Anyways, uh, we can pick whatever team we want, and then we'll take them into battle, and we can select as we go through what ship we want to uh, play as next. So even though we have two controllers set up right now, uh, we actually have to take turns. Oh, okay. Because uh, it's like, yeah, I can move, and then if you and move I, it as I well. I realized that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with what I've got here, except that I'm going to remove the Tremor ship because I think it's way overpowered, and I'm sure a lot of uh, Star Control uh, fans will be going to replace it with Judas Pekong ship. And let's see. I take the big out as well because they are pretty overpowered. Good. I can fix button. Excuse me just that back out for him. Right, that's Thank you. 
Oh. All right, so the ship details are not in. Okay, well, anyways, so that's going to be my team to start. Why don't you go ahead and find your team? All right, and what I'm going to choose is just by looking at the things, and I'll evolve from there. I don't know that well. And this one's not allowed, right? No, you can pick whoever you like. That was my choice. Oh, I go here. You go to where and press uh, press your shop button. Be the first one. Oh, so it's, I'm sorry. It's these. These two. Yeah. So you'll press the green for to choose red back out. You can fill up the, all three of those squares. This will be uh, Amy's first time playing this. something We're going to go over here. Battle. Uh, we're gonna... So how come you have fewer ships? Yes, that's just what I, I try with. Necessarily, I have to fill up all the slots. That's kind of the thing is that it's like, you know, fun, but it's confident. Or if you like a certain, you know, a certain amount or that kind of thing, you can do whatever you like. So. All right, so. Okay, so yeah, we're actually gonna have to change. Well, so that's what I was afraid of. That it, that's a thing on the 3DO, and I wasn't sure if it was going to hold over here. Uh, same setup here, uh, A, B, right there. This, so now I'm on the top here. And then we'll keep that in, in consideration on the next round. All right, so I'm gonna go with both. All right, let's do this. Hey, hey, hey,
Now, if you go off the boundaries of the screen, you'll, you'll be able to remember to use your other button for your special ability. Come and get me. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Oh. Weird playing this voice character. Don't see any special. Go. It w yeah. wasn't the button you told me that. Oh. You did use it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Myself and my own butt missiles. Jeez. That's what, that, that is actually what they're called, butt missiles. That's why they're making the fart sound. <laughs> really hard. I did not expect it to be difficult, so difficult with it. Uh, All right, let's see. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> My God, they're so evil in the story, but they've got a great, great ship. Oh. I don't think I know how to drive, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Tank controls, tank controls. I... Oh my god, I had no life. They are powerful. You can shoot my uh, my shots up. Yeah, like that. <laughs> well, it <they> dissipate. <laughs> Aww. I'm gonna get ya. Ah. Yes. I didn't have enough enough power. Now that that that's the that's the that's the mic on special ability though is that if you get a full uh, full battery charge, I'm trying to teach you. Okay. Uh, if you if you get a full battery charge and you're down on life, you can hit it and you'll actually get crew back. But it's only it's only if you have a full battery charge. That's all.
good counter. You know what your little pups are doing? Nope. They're sucking out my battery power. So I can't shoot nor can I regenerate. Nice. I'm, I'm steering my ship. Crashed on the planet. <laughs> damn. And I can't figure out how to steer. Damn. Well, um, press press forward or up to accelerate, and then left or right to turn. And that, that's all. That's all you need to know. And if you ever need to slow down, then you just turn the opposite direction and thrust. That's it. Press just forward, right? Right. Uh, um, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That applies to all ships. See? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to join us in the chat, too. Oh. Alright, all that good. Where no planet has gone before. Run out of phasers. I'm out. Caramel <laughs> mode. <laughs> nice. Nice. Alright, alright, alright. Time to bring out the Urquans. Sponge, 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 fighters. No. Oh, you butt. Bum back. Bum back. They are. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, this particular uh, uh, race, they actually have a, uh, a chance to resurrect every time they die. Use your special uh, your special ability to charge up your batteries. You have to hold it down. Dodo. What's this one? Word. Yeah, keep holding it down until you charge Baby. your battery. Fool. Quit. There you go. Oh, that was See? fun! See? Oh, whoa! Yeah, you got you got the resurrection. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> of course I heard it. Oh man. Oh man, I love the pecank. <laughs> oh my god. I was drawn in by your suction wand. <laughs> my suction wand that I don't <laughs> That's the uh the one I uh I played the fireball one. Oh! oh, so close. <sighs> oh my god, those damn little things. They're like homing missiles, right? Uh, they're little, uh, they're little uh, autonomous uh, rocket propelled uh, fighters. They're actually Urquans. They go out there and they they shoot at you. <laughs> God, I only have one guy to get <laughs> sent out. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why don't I have any more fighters? It's just the like, one fighter and the captain. Better save him. Oh, sweet. Nice. <laughs> Although you were saying how you already weakened. <laughs> well, no, but that's because of your hits. <laughs>
Oh, oh man, I almost hit you. Oh. <laughs> no! <laughs> nice. It looks like you've uh, picked it up. Holy crappy. Ooh, I got you. Uh-oh. Did it do me any good, though? Oh, oh. oh damn, it oh. hurt. Woo. Sorry if that was too loud. <laughs> Nice. No! <laughs> By the way, that, that special ability, it scrambles your controls. For, oh, for, for the, small, little, the little things team. I was throwing? No, no, the, the one that I threw at you. Oh, the little sparkles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I was like, man, am I toast? All right, let's see if I can do a kind of chip on a twice to that. Win, quit, idiot. Cool. Wimp. Dodo. Wimp. Worm. Idiot. Wimp. Loser. Jerk. Fast. Idiot. Baby. Idiot. Dodo. Stupid. Loser. Jerk. Fool, jerk, <gasps> You won. I didn't get the resurrection. Aww. <laughs> you have a ship left. Oh, oh, I've got the siren. Ow. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put too much. Sure. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Productiveness wins. <laughs> that one last ship. On oh, the little one. I'm, I'm the chromosome mouse. Oh, yeah! My God. <laughs> green. Uh, yeah. All right. 
Okay, so here you take. Why don't you cho one. choose your new your the, new set? Th this one is the top one, then. and this is the bottom one. Why are we switching? Because I'd like to try the controller. Or, 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 or you know, you. That's fine. But you were comfortable with this, right? So let's. Whatever. Yeah, I'll try this one. Oh, okay. So, uh, you go first, or I'm I'm the first. Well, you can go ahead and go first. So. Every ship has its own, you know, distinct powers and abilities. Uh, the Siren, the uh, ship that I played at the end there, uh, it has its normal shot, and then its special ability is a Siren's Call. That if you get close enough to another ship, it will actually get the crew to jump ship, float in space, and you can do one of two things. Either you can pick them up, add them to your own crew base, or you can just shoot them and kill them, and then they can't—they can't be recovered by the other uh, the other team member, uh, or the I'm sorry, the other captain or other ship. They they have to go. Uh, but uh, that's weird. That's what happened last time. Okay. All right. Are you living? Out. 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 Much as I love the Zot Zot Fox dick. One second, guys.
right, so if you'll take a look on the bottom uh, of uh, each of the uh, teams, you'll notice that there is the uh, the score allotment, and uh, that lets us know that uh, you know balance team one uh, versus balance team two, they have the the different uh, powers amongst them. So balance team one is slightly more powerful based on the selection than uh, balance team two, but only only slightly, not, not a huge. But that's that's part of the game. That's that's the cool thing about it. So, all right. You had the right idea. <laughs> you know how to play the Oomka. <laughs> Reverse into him. Second time playing, and you see how she's picking up on these ships. <laughs> okay, uh, just to let you know the special move on this one you hold down the blue button and you use the joystick, and you can turn the cannon. So that way, that way you can go forward and shoot backwards, or or whatever direction. Or you can just leave it forward. See what happened? Cool, no. <laughs> okay, so look, just so you know, when you hold down the special uh, button, use the joystick, you can scan it. Tap it, you release little autonomous fighters that once they uh, attach to the uh, ship, then they, they whittle away at the crew and they go the ship. That's what you did. That's what you, that's why you destroyed me. Oh. Was, yeah. You, oh, okay. Yeah, you won, not not, not me. <laughs> oh, I thought you crashed into something. No. Well, I mean, I crashed into your autonomous fighters, which attached themselves to my craft and proceeded to destroy it. So, yeah. <laughs> That 
three. Suicide run. <laughs> what you get? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> no, he's... Trying to figure out how to use. I obviously don't know how to use. Yeah, the self destruct. Yeah, I was all talking about doing a suicide run on the show 60. That's what they do. They, they, they go and they go, yay! And they'll take out wh whatever they hit. <laughs> so, oh well. What is that? That's, that's your special move. Are definitely a good counter to the ill wrath. <laughs> nice. Time for some butt missiles. <laughs> <laughs> and ramp begins.
Oh, sorry, uh, planet. Oh, I said. Oh, oh, oh. oh, fighters. Good dogs.
Yep, they suck your battery away. And with the Druja, in the Druja's case, you have to sacrifice crew for battery, so hopefully they're taking your crew away too. Nice. You see his name? What? Yeah, because they are all about money. Oh. <laughs> oh, they're way worse than the Ferengi. <laughs> For you. Damn. And, uh, and also, you might want to look at some of the names for uh, sci-fi references, like the Earthling now. Ike. Christopher Pike from uh, Star Trek, the original series. Wow! What a collusion. Wow. Where are you going? <laughs> Another dimension? Most of my crew died in that in that assault. <laughs> for a pecan win. <laughs>
Dodo, loser. Wimp, baby, fool. Dodo, loser. Yes, up to my pick up. Baby, Dodo, Wimp, Twit, Fool, Wimp, Stupid, Loser. <gasps> uh oh, it's down to our last two ships, and I've got a Pekunk, and Amy's got a half of a staffed Cora vessel. Oh, shit. Uh. Wow. Yes. Baby, stupid fool, baby, moron. Baby, stupid dodo, stupid. Dummy, wimp, idiot, moron, baby, wimp. Stupid, loser, idiot, dodo. Yes! The Pekunk are victorious! Man. <laughs> oh, man. So, do you want to do an, uh, another match, or do you want to... We can do one more match. Okay. Alright, give me, give me two minutes. Of your... Welcome to our new viewer doing uh, our shmups tonight. Uh, we're exploring Super Melee on uh, Star Control 2. We're getting ready to start another match here.
Hey, Spy Hunter, how's it going? We're playing some uh, Star Control 2 tonight, uh, the Super Melee mode. How you doing tonight? Good. Hi there. That's good to hear. Good to hear. All right. This is actually a uh, a, a real real big favorite game of mine. Uh, it's uh, originally it was called Star Control Two, uh, and it came out on PC in 1992. It was re-released on the 3DO uh, home console after that, and this version is actually based off of the 3DO version. But uh, it's actually a PC version that's completely free. You can actually download it uh, right now on your uh, PC. And it's called uh, the Urquan Masters. Same game. Uh, it's just completely free because the original creators, uh, Fred Ford and Paul Reich, uh, they actually released the source code to the community uh, so they could improve it for the PC and allow it to be playable by anybody. And this particular mode here is just the versus battle mode. Uh, there's actually a fully integrated, uh, wonderfully written story uh, that you can actually partake in uh, by uh, just starting a new game and going through the story mode. Uh, basically, the premise is uh, Earth has been enslaved by a race called the Urquan, and you play a captain that, by circumstances, was separated from Earth on a scientific no. mission. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. On a scientific mission, and that uh, you went back to Earth, and now you're trying to make uh, contact with a bunch of uh, different species around the universe, around the galaxy, uh, to go up against the Urquan and eventually free the Earth uh, from its uh, eventual fate. But along the way, you meet alien races, you play diplomat in a lot of cases, uh, the ones you make friends with, you gain blueprints to the different ships you see here and it helps you to uh, win the game but the cool feature about it is that you have only four years to do it in uh, before the end of all the races of the game and it's actually a clock that counts down by date it's fantastic uh, i i really really love the game but we'll uh, we'll show you the battle mode here that we're actually we're having our third battle right now so would you I can't that. switch some more. I pressed the wrong button. No, I just didn't even know who you picked. And usually I would. I'm the top one. No, but I can't tell which ship. I only switched one. Oh, you did the siren. Okay. It it really is. It's a it's a fantastic game, and uh, it uh, it doesn't get nearly enough credit as it should. But uh, I uh, I certainly hope that one day we might get treated to a, a third in the series. It will definitely be a lot different. Wow, this is only her third time playing the game, and she's actually giving me some guff. So, <laughs> all right, so let's bring out the druge here. Get over here. Get over. Uh, actually, the entire game, story mode and all, is completely free to download. And uh, on the, uh, the sidebar of the uh, stream, uh, I've got the, uh, the site uh, scrolling across there that you can go to and uh, download it. But yeah, the entire thing, the entire thing's free. It's great. Get a pick. Get a call. Rouge mm. Busters. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, a Druge versus Druge match? Oh, that's... Oh! 
Oh, oh, snack you good. Got you again. Get the uh, the race we're playing right now. Uh, to charge your weapon batteries, you actually have to sacrifice your crew, and uh, the crew is actually the green bar on the left side of each portrait. The red is the uh, weapons battery and if you want to fill your battery back up for this particular race you have to throw one of your own crew into the furnace <laughs> oh God damn bam <laughs> they're, they're they're so evil storyline they are so evil oh god terrible race oh and oh that's another great thing about it. Uh, every single one of the alien races, when you meet them and you do your diplomatic uh, uh, parts of it, you um, every every race is voiced. Every single reply is voiced, and uh, it, it's an incredible amount of dialogue. But uh, but yeah, all incredibly voiced. Oh, oh, lucky shot on my part. Do I get a few more of those? Uh. When you run out of crew, you die. <laughs> you blow up. So it's it's kind of like your life meter, uh, like in a fighting game. Oh, you're trying to mess with my controls. Saw that. I saw that. Yeah, ran out of crew. <laughs> and 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 if and in Bruges' case, if you sacrifice all your crew for your battery and you get down to one, which is the captain, you uh, you controlling it. Uh, you can't sacrifice any more crew, therefore you can't shoot anymore, and you kind of become dead in the water. <laughs> Do some Earth one here. Now this this ship actually has really powerful uh, forward weapons, but their special ability is to release crew out into space, where they can go attack the enemy by themselves. They have to get close to it. What like they're trying to do now, they failed. Now, the uh, the thing is, they can be shot. I can't believe I just gave it away, but. <laughs> Damn forward blasters! This sounds like a job for the United Federation of. Hey, look, it's Kirk! Oh, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> you got Kirk! Oh, 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 have some fighters! Jesus! <laughs> I guess James T. Kirk wasn't it? Was never my favorite. Oh, yeah, it should have been Picard. Fine, let's do a. Uh, versus. Oh, man. Plant, the plant race. Ah, no. You can turn around and shoot him. I'll lose crew. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I should not have listened to my foe it, during battle. It, it it is a little it is a little cheap. It right. is, but is it's the guy. fact that they are vulnerable to uh, shots that most people, when they see the, uh, the Urquan uh, use that move, <laughs> when they see the Urquan use that move, they'll uh, shoot the, uh, the little soldiers. Oof. Wow. Cheez-Its. Cheez it <laughs> you know you want to use the butt missile. You know you want to. Oh, Ilrath, the Klingons of Star Control, basically. Except that they're spiders. No, 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 no. Use your push type. Because they, they can't home in on you. 
you also need to come out of it so you, yeah, so you know where you are <laughs> occasionally. Now see, I can't actually release any of the fires now because I'm the only one left on the uh, craft. Oh, oh God! <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Lucky. Grignac. Why are they still yelling? <laughs> Grignac. Grignac. Rock. Rock. <laughs> oh. Oh, Grace, the sniper. Oh, I just got me once. Just once! You can do it! Damn, do it, Captain! Oh! oh my god! Took my victory lap around the planet here. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Got one guy left. Come on! In. Too much gat! Too much gat! Come on! Hit me! Go. Hit me! <laughs> now, yeah, remember that he's, he's got, got the coolest music. He's got the same the same move as the Urquan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Use it. Go with Mary Lou Lolly Lake. Stay still in space too. Mastered, uh, I guess. And in case anyone wants to know, I'm the one. I'm the one on the top. Pikafo. I'm Lou Fui. <laughs> Louis Fui. Louis Fui. I'm dead. <laughs> it's better than that, alien. Listen to this. <laughs> Alright, go with Anderson. If you special ability. Just teleporting? Not, not too much, because <laughs> you never know where you're gonna appear. Wow, Ticket yeah. Taco went down. <laughs> Nine seven six kill. <laughs> oh man, what big guns? <laughs> he really, really bad, bad guys in the game. <laughs> I, I, heard I it. tried. <laughs> I heard it. Uh, yay! <laughs> Alright, why not? I got two pecans. Cool. Baby. Loser. The pecans' uh, special ability is to insult to uh, recharge their batteries, and they have a small percentage. Uh, of uh, regeneration or resurrection, I should say. So if they die, they could come back. Uh, 
Yes! <laughs>
Yark. Twist. Wimp. Worm. Wimp. Loser. Fool. Loser. Oh, man. Oh, oh. come on. <laughs> Show the uh, story, story mode a little bit. Are we playing till one? Twelve. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like to see a little bit of the story mode, or do you want to see us do another battle? So it's all up to you, Spider. Mode. Thank you for voting. Yes, thank you very much. Your, All right, vote, so your votes count and they matter. It's going to start out with a little bit of a, uh, a movie, and it's a short one, but it'll explain uh, uh, a lot here. It is the year 2155. The people of Earth now travel between stars. Following the sad lessons of the Little War, a unified Earth knew a century of golden peace and prosperity. A glorious dream dashed by the arrival of a hostile armada. Earth and her partners in the Alliance of Free Stars faced a monstrous adversary. They did. The predatory Orquan. And its hierarchy of battle thralls. There were many great battles, yet Earth was losing. But then, far across space, an amazing discovery was made, deep beneath the surface of an alien world. An underground city, filled with the technological wonders of the Precursors, an ancient and powerful race who vanished a thousand centuries ago. But the Orquan swept through the nearby stars, stranding our scientific team here. Twenty years have passed, 
We have continued our research. We now know what the precursors built here. It is a factory. A factory for building starships. Indicator. But there are only enough materials to build the skeleton of one vessel. Yet that must be enough. Because you must pilot the vessel and return to Earth. And if the war with the Oroquan still rages, <laughs> fight for Earth and the Alliance as well as you can. The great story. So, basically, you start off by going to Soul System, or our solar system here, and you're on the outer edge, and you've got the ship as it was on Vela 2, which was the planet that they showed there. It has barely anything going for it. You have one Earth cruiser, the one that you went to the planet in as your escort, which is the one on the left side there. But you have barely enough fuel, you have some crew, and um, that's about it. Uh, you'll see the date below the portrait of the ship there, and that's current date, but the idea is that you have until I believe it's April of 2160 to complete the game. If you don't by then, it's game over, but there's going to be something that happens in relation to the storyline that you'll know that the, the game over is coming and uh, that we'll have little hope left of uh, completing the game. Usually if you don't have all of your uh, ducks in a row, uh, by 2159, uh, then you're in trouble. Uh, and you might as well just go back to your state and try again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver to uh, Earth here and make contact. Try to, and look what happens. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. Gary. Gary dudes. So did you guys see the little brain looking guy? The brain? It was a, a translating, I guess, the way the Urquan communicate into English for us to hear. Uh, yeah. So he's kind of like a slave of the Urquan. Yeah, they're, they're like their universal translators, uh, but just living, not uh... So actually, I want to go here first because this will actually show Earth and what's going on right now is Earth is under the slave shield that they put around it, the Urquan. This is how it appears right now at this point in the uh, in the game. But what I need to do is actually go to the orbital platform over here at the star base. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the slave planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Hyperwave. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat, are you the resupply vessel? Now from here, this is where the diplomacy comes in. You can actually pick 
multiple responses to whatever the situation is, but normally it goes from positive on top to negative on the bottom. So that's why you see right here, and ready to assist you, but then you go down here, Slave Planet, Hierarchy Resupply Vessel, what is going on here? It's it, it's it's differing in, in strength. Uh, sometimes you can get yourself in real trouble by going with the lower ones. Other times, it's actually a good idea, especially if somebody's forceful against you first. But, obviously, we're going to go with uh, this one, because I don't really know if I want to identify myself yet. Uh, I do want to help, but I don't want to say that, oh yeah, I'm not Urquan. So, uh, yes, this is the resupply vessel. What do you need resupply? Well, it's about damn time. In the Fieldy Agreement, the Urquan promised that this station would be resupplied at least every five years, and it's been over eight since we saw you. If you had arrived a few weeks later, there wouldn't be anyone alive on this station. <laughs> Never mind. Just begin your transfer of materials immediately, starting with the radioactives. Okay. So... <laughs> oh dang, when you know it, we'll plumb out of those. <laughs> Actually, I lied. This isn't the resupply vessel. Well, let's go with uh, this. What? One. What kind of idiot sent you out here without replacements for our energy cores? It's amazing we've kept our generators online for as long as we have. Look, you'd better get those radioactives right away or all the other supplies are pretty damn pointless since we'll all be too dead to use them. Alright, so... We, we know that he needs radioactives. So, the fastest way to get radioactives in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful. Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. Eh, it's pretty calm compared to what you see later in the game. Thanks, I'll make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. Okay, so this is where the exploration portion of the game uh, uh, takes a uh, center stage. So we need to go to Mercury. So slowly but surely. <clears throat> Get out of here and go to Mercury. Eventually our ship becomes stronger and faster and we don't have to oh, yes. lug it around like this. Oh yes. So usually the first thing I'll improve is the turning jets. <laughs> so, once we get here, we can scan. And it'll give us basic information about the planet. You know, it's a orbit, axis, it's temperature. Usually the most important things that you want to look for are going to be on the left side, the last three. Uh, temperature, the uh, uh, storms, and earthquakes. Uh, when you have a really high temperature, you're going to have a lot of flames going on around on the surface. So when you're moving your shuttle around, you all, you'll have to dodge them. The higher that temperature is, the more of those there are. There's some planets that without the proper protection, you can not navigate them. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, storms, lightning storms, static storms. Uh, they'll shock your craft. The higher that number, I believe it's zero to eight, the more of those there are. And then same thing with the earthquake. The higher that is, the more of these radial circles that you'll see erupting from the surface. So, I'm going to auto scan because uh, unless I'm looking for specifically energy, biological, or anything else, then there's no reason to do anything but the scan of everything. But then I'm given the option to take my lander down. At this point in the game, I have one lander. And every time you go down, you use fuel from your fuel base. So, I've got 10 right now. And it'll actually tell me when I pick it, if you look right below the crew, it says fuel use 0.7. So I have to manage that as well. But every time I take a crew down there, I'm taking 12 crew members. Each time I take damage, I lose one of those crew members. If I come back with less than I left with, then it's docked for my crew total. If I lose all 12 members while I'm down there, I lose the shuttle. Therefore, I. I have to get another one before I can go down. It is possible to fail at this point in the game. If you lose your shuttle, you're going to be in trouble. So, that being said, let's go get some radioactives. Now, usually anything with color is going to be what you want to go after. 
the uh, the silver ones tend to be worth less overall, and we'll you'll see that once I go back to uh, the uh, orbital platform. Okay, so that's the so I just somebody just died. Here we go. <laughs> so uh, that's a that's a small amount. What I can do is I can actually go over to. Exit me. And I can go to my cargo right here. On my cargo, it shows me the uh, items I've brought up from the planet surface. Each of the numbers in the middle column are the value dollars worth for every unit that I take back. Now, right now, obviously, I don't have any of the highest one, but I'll get that later. Uh, so I have 17 of these, so 8 times 17, that's my value, things like that. So definitely the better the color, the, the more colorful, usually the more they're worth. Um, and also you'll notice on the bottom there it says free. How many spaces I have free in my cargo hold. You can upgrade that later, but right now I only have 450 spaces uh, or units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, grab some. At this point in the game, it's not a bad idea to grab as much of this as I can before I go back. It'll uh, make the commander a lot happier. And again, I don't want to don't want to be too risky either. That's the thing I love about the game. It's really up to you on how risky or how safe you play it, especially at the beginning. As a uh, He's a little, the little uh, shuttles are expensive. Getting, I can get out of here. Oof. On that fire. I'll make one more trip to get those last two there. Head back to orbital platform of these. See what happens. All right, there we go. Yeah, you hear that a lot. <laughs> All right, so thrusters to full. <laughs> it's like quarter impulse. <laughs> yeah, kinda. All right. Definitely go a lot faster when you're well, <laughs> when you're out here. Uh, I'm coming. I'm gonna come away from me. Uh. Did you find any radioactive elements for our power cores? I did. And I'm ready to exchange. What are you gonna get now? I'll just give We're initiating it. transfer of radioactives, Captain. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores, wow, that was that's quick. much better. Power ratings are climbing. Life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? What kind of ship are you? Oh, wait, you're on a space station. Never mind. All right, so... Obviously, there's only one real response here. Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. No, not exactly. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Andresen Space. The Vela Star System, yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? Hi. Oh, well, no. Actually... Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, long time ago. 
That was in the first years after the defeat when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station. They'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. I will go and take care of that right now. Be careful, Captain. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Ilrath Avengers down there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. Oh, really? So, when I continue the story mode? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. If, if, uh, if he can do something else, what would that do? It is. It, it, it actually is. Uh, when when I first played, when I first played, hey, what's up, Raziel Prime? When uh, I first played Star Control Two, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Mass Effect. Uh, when I first got to the uh, the uh, the bridge, and I'm I'm totally blanking uh, on the name of the ship. But when I got to the the uh, ability to go from one star system to the next, that this was the first thing that came to my mind was Star Control Two. I was like, whoa! It's like they they made a 3D version of of Star Control, and I uh, was very uh, very pleased with that. Uh, I have yet to uh, to finish uh, Star Control, or excuse me, yeah, Mass Effect, but. It's probably because I'm a diehard on this, but I do own all three, and I will eventually. So this is the problem he was talking about. The the, uh, the threat that I need to take care of, that uh, my thruster is burning hot. Uh, make, make sure I take care of all the spotty eluders. Uh, Alright, so... I'll just go here, and it actually generates a report from the Pussy, and it tells us basically what he thinks he's been hearing. That is true. That, that is true. Now that I have found out about this problem, quote unquote, I'm gonna go back here, and he's gonna be like, "What? Have you dealt with the base yet? Dealt with the base yet? What? Are you okay, Commander? I mean, darn! All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast, and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long-range oh, no. sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, Avenger class. Yeah. I think you've got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. 
by the fetid breath of the dark twin Kazan, a human and an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone... So the drone never made it back to the Urquan starship so. had approached Earth. Uh, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless. But here is a human in an armored starship. And therefore, in direct violation of the oath of fealty, I am sure our but. masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. When I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. Hmm. Let's see. What's the one that I always, I always pick? Yeah. It will be a pleasure blasting your ugly face out of the sky. I have no fear of you, feeble mammal. Though my ship lacks a functioning cloaking device, and many of our crew are dead, my gods, Jogar the Black and Kazan the Unseen, have personally confided to me that they despise you humans, and that they will help us to kill you all. Bring it on. Bring it on. All right, so this is where I can select either my flagship, not advisable, because if you lose your flagship, you're sick, game over. I'm going to pick Woo. <laughs> my <laughs> Woo! <laughs> my wingman. All right. So. What is it? Uh, everything is first. Right. Didn't take didn't take anything. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I, know, I haven't I seen know, an right? Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can <laughs> handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're gonna try. Well, so the I mean, obvious first you know, step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? Let's see. I like this one. We will slowly build our strength, unify an allied star fleet, and bring the Urquan <laughs> to their knee equivalents. Or, er, trust me, Commander, I have a plan. Really good plan. For now, it must remain a secret. Or are we just do it? <laughs> yes, Captain. We'll do just that. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. <laughs> and since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? The new alliance of free stars? The concordance of alien nations? The United Federation of Worlds? Hmm, that sounds familiar. The Empire of Zelnik? Dude, dictatorish. Okay, that sounds pretty inspiring. So be it. The new alliance of and three it, stars. Now, the, uh, Captain, United, I expect the configuration uh, uh, process uh, for the star base to take at least two says, weeks, so okay, let's get make to it work. So. <laughs> <laughs> for all those Star Trek fans. I have good news to report, Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, We've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button, but there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor that is ship too uses expensive. it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship to refine starship fuel to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions how this star base works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't ah, hesitate to I'll ask. I'll find it all, man. 
Thanks. Oh, yeah. Take my minerals, please. Not a bad job, Captain. Oh, I can do better. Return soon, Captain. I will. So what do you have to do now? Go get more stuff? Well, not only that, but I have to start talking to uh, aliens. That kind of thing. So, at the star base here, I can, of course, talk to the commander if I want. Uh, I can outfit my starship, or I can build other ships that I have blueprints to. This, right now, at this point, I only have blueprints to the uh, Earth cruisers, though. And they're expensive. They're really expensive. And they're not the best. So, let's outfit the starship. So, first of all, I need to fill up my fuel as far as I can, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need it. Really bad. So, right now, I can do a maximum of 60 fuel units. So then I can go to module, and this is actually where yes, the music in this game is fantastic. Uh, I can uh, you know uh, pick any modules that I have blueprints. Uh, I can increase my crew. I can get a new storage bay, or fuel tanks, a dynamo unit for charging my uh, weapon batteries, and that's really all I've got right now. So what I'm going to go for is the storage bay because. It makes my trips more worthwhile to be able to go out and load up on more minerals in one trip, especially with the cost of fuel the moment. Sometimes I'll even go as far as doing uh, an additional one beyond that. But uh, you can actually uh, go up here, you can uh, do your turning jets, which, oh god, you need turning jets. And that's usually why I'll go down here and I, I'll only do one extra. Um, storage unit because uh, it's good to have an additional planet lander in case you, <laughs> in case you meet with an untimely demise and uh, yeah I uh, you know I think I'm gonna go one ninja and one uh, anime matter so now I only have 202 RU left that doesn't really get me much here so And I'm gonna go to the shipyard. This is my favorite track. I love this track. So here I can fill up my fleet or my crew on my wingmen and also my starship. And you just select which one. And then it highlights the crew. And the crew cost uh, cheap right now, but, and not to give away anything, if you make certain bad decisions throughout the game, that will change and relationships will change too, so you have to be very careful about that. Uh, if you go down to any of these other slots here, you can choose to build a ship and it'll open up that bay door and you'll have another ship on your uh, fleet, but I don't have 1100 RU right now. So, let's go ahead and depart Starbase, and we're going to meet our first alien really quick. And uh, this is actually a uh, favorite of mine. Actually, Doc, Doc, Pick are one of my favorites, but Wiffo uh, is special. <laughs> so we're gonna go all the way to the edge. Wiffo! And. Damn, I went the wrong way. I go to Pluto, which in this game is still considered a planet. <laughs> Is a point. Rock. Whatever. If I go here and I'm gonna do a scan. Do oh, there's a mineral, and that's not any mineral, that's the really expensive stuff. But there's also an energy reading. What could that be? Of course we're gonna pick this up. Aw yeah. That is each unit of that is worth 25 RU. Oh boy. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to lose a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> they killed Kowalski, Fritz, Jen, O'Donnell, Luigi! And all three of the Lieberman triplets! We have turned fire with ours. That's fine. Thunder can't penetrate the ship's whole armor. 
You're initiating emergency launch procedures. And... Attention, a big mean hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an obvious attack posture. This is Spotty Captain Swizzle. I know you are going to torture me, so let's I know, they killed Mario's brother, what the hell? The coordinates of my homeworld, Spatewa, are 241.6 by 368.7, and the ultra secret Spate Cipher, which is known only by me and several billion other Spate, is Huffy, Huffy, Muffy, Huffy, Duffy. Duffy. Sorry about that little mistake with your landing vehicle. Uh -huh. I was uh, so startled when it approached my uh -huh. vessel in a threatening manner uh -huh. that uh, my uh -huh. automated defense uh -huh. system uh -huh. fired on it when it got too close. Uh -huh. I hope nobody got hurt. You killed Luigi! <laughs> hmm. You attacked our lander, killed our crew, prepare to die. Is what a lot of us would like to say, but. He's going to be pretty helpful, so let's go to... Are you Either sure? Place. Because <laughs> your statement is often just a more polite way of saying, Attention alien vessel, identify <laughs> yourself or be destroyed! In any event, I am Spotty Captain Fawiko of the Void Ship Star Runner. Based here in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Tower, the Star Force. Which our master, the Earth Man, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything tricky. Let's see. About 20 years ago, this region he likes of to space talk. was dominated a by lot. a rich confederation known as the Alliance of Free Stars, which was composed of the alien native to these parts who did not want to be enslaved. They made a valiant effort against the superior Urquan forces. It even looked like they might miraculously defeat the combined Urquan Armada, right up to the point at which the Urquan totally defeated, indeed annihilated them. So what are you? When the Oricon Armada entered the system to subjugate formerly the Earthlings, the Oricon presented the humans with the standard slave options. Join the hierarchy as combat thralls and retain some autonomy, including the right to travel through space, or become a fellow species and return to a free atomic savagery on the surface of their homeworld, encased for all time beneath an impenetrable force shield. The humans chose the latter option, and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Earth one didn't trust them to obey the restrictions. So, they chose a small group of hierarchy combat starships from the Inlet and Spartan fleets to create the so-called Earth Guard and station them at a base on Earth's moon. Tell me what you were doing on Pluto. Apparently, we were stationed on Earth's moon, <laughs> which made us it a bit uneasy, because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. But the Internet kept telling us that it was impossible, since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Ilrath left, again we grew fearful and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. They're not cowards at all, but... No, but not at all. Well, I really want to, but... I'm just not sure that under the present circumstances, joining you in your exciting and also dangerous space adventures would be the best course of action right now, because the Oricon could return at any minute, and the punishment they would bestow on me for such treason would make any other horrible death seem like big fun by comparison. Thanks for the offer, though. Aww. 
the Iraq contingent were supposed to be the toughest rigged crest, uh, the most rigid flipper, <laughs> no, ah, uh, yes, the backbone of the Earth Guard Force. But they departed the system on the mass not long after the last Earth on Dreadnought vanished from this region of space. They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had we grown dissatisfied with the Inrat's passivity and wanted them to kill, or at least torture someone soon. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of... Real soon. <laughs> we decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So, we rigged up some old service androids and ordered them to drive around on the lunar surface in bulldozers, endlessly pushing around the same piles of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's local radio transmitter to an audio Melnormy fun rum called Winky's Happy Night, hoping they would think we were still there. What happened to the other spotty ships? Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our earth guard forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we spotty call the Ultimate, Ultimate Evil! Which is pretty funny later on. <laughs> How many crew do you have of the person? Present, that is to say, scores and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super efficient, mass destruction oriented starship, which could lay siege to an entire planetary system should we choose to do so. Which, fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. Hundreds? Come on. I am undone! You are far too clever for a poor spotty like me, and now I must submit to your superior alien intellect. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species' eluder class of void ships typically holds 30 spotty crewmen, though at present my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full complement due to the needs of my homeworld in their resistance against the ultimate evil. And in fact, my vessel is somewhat understaffed right now. Understaffed is how just I am him. the spotter on it. board, which is a bit frightening, as I am sure you can understand. Come on. You build a strong case, Captain. Here I am, alone and undefended on the surface of a hostile alien world. Above me, you hover in orbit, encrusted with beam guns, missile launchers, and other more dreadful weapons. Easier so to protect I you with. Myself, as a whistle, is it prudent to remain here, as vulnerable as a mushling on a skillet? No! I answer myself. Join me, human! He is kind and good! But then a wicked voice whispers, Beware, the human is tricking you. <laughs> if you join him, you will die alone in the cold of space. And for reasons beyond my understanding, Captain, this voice overwhelms the other. And so I must remain here, largely against my will. The galaxy teams with threatening monsters. Are you happy here? Alone? And vulnerable? How true, Captain! How true! In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I have been quite ill at ease, and yet now I find myself enjoying your company. This witty dialogue, and the presence of your huge, powerful, <laughs> death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use yeah. in order to save me from any hostile life form huh? who threatened me with death. But... Happy days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitation and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well He's probably going to be the first one. I must watch to be honest. for just a moment though. And make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures as myself. 
So that's our first alien species. Uh, we actually not only get his ship, but if I go back to the star base, I can actually now build spot these ships and add more to the side as long as I have RU to cover it and then I stop moving through that kind of thing. So but right now I don't really have enough to go back. So it's time to leave the soul system, go into hyperspace, and go to another star. Now what I can do is I can do that a few ways. I can exit manually just by leaving the star system. Or I can go to my star map. Now if I go here it shows me spheres of influence for every race that I have made contact with. So far, there's just the Ilrath and the Spothy. So, what I usually end up doing is in. There we go. What I usually end up doing is I'll go down here to Alpha Centauri because that is a really big system. I've got a little bit more to choose from. And there's a possibility that I'll run into the Mel Norme, which is a trading race. And they actually, uh, any of the big stars, they're usually there uh, along uh, with uh, the really big stars. So I just plot my course, I back out, and it'll go into autopilot. It's also another really good track. Right now I'm Still a bit on the slow side, but I'm a moving. And that's a big system, Alpha Centauri. Now, another reason that I like to come to Alpha Centauri is this two outer planets right now. They contain a lot of, a lot of the 25RU minerals. The problem is Alpha Centauri is a huge sun. So that means pretty much all all of the uh, the, the surfaces are hot. So right here on the most the outermost rim, not as hot, but you get really close, you're looking at 1,000, 2,000 plus degrees. This one's not going to be the one I'm looking for, so I'm just going to move out of here, and I'm going to move to the next one. How do you know what you're looking for by the color? Yes. What color are you looking for? I'm looking for a bright pink. Pretty much the same color as the text on the top there. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is probably it here uh, because you'll know when there are worlds that are named after the Ruby world. I remember. Yeah. Now you see the 433 degrees. That means there's going to be a lot of fire, plus there's lightning storms, plus there's earthquakes. I have two landers, so what I usually do at this point is this is the role playing uh role playing player in me i'll save right here just in case i screw it up but if i scan it there's not a lot but they're huge deposits You've got these four big ones right here and that, that's a game changer right now so i try to land as close as as i can to it but the axis and the inclination all of that actually decides where I land. I can I can try like laying right here, but once I actually get into orbit and I go through the atmosphere, I could end up over here. And so I'm, I'm trying to get as close to it as I can, so that way I don't have to worry about the fire. Let's see what happens. Mm. Mm. So, that's it. I just get that and come back. Uh, the problem is even though I'm getting a lot from this in the long run, it's using more fuel. 
actually 1.2 units of fuel per per trip, so I have to be careful on crew and gas. There we go. That was a good one. Alright. Peace. Fatalities, please. Jeez. Okay, so I got everything. Now, if I go to cargo, I almost have a hundred of these, but well, that's 2,500 RU right there. That's five thrusters. That's uh, uh, two more cargo holds. Um, it's, as I said, it's uh, very, very helpful. So now I did that successfully. I'm definitely saving. So, get out of here. Maybe uh, I'll go to the next one here. The closer I get to the sun, the more dangerous these uh, plants are going to get. Uh, and usually if you see the bigger uh, planets, they're going to be gas giants, which you can't land on. Uh, don't ignore them, though, because there's actually a... Uh, I'll just say there's a reason. There's one... Uh, gas giant that actually has something uh, that you want out of all of the systems. And oh, uh, another thing I might mention uh, that really shows the uh, the scope of uh, the game is uh, if I go to the star map, every single one of these stars on the star map is a place you can go. Within that star, there is a solar system ranging from two planets, like a sun and a planet, or two planets, up to what you see here at Alpha Centauri. Essentially, that I think they had said that there are several hundred stars and several thousand planets to, to discover. And within that, there are actually special planets called Rainbow Worlds that give you clues uh, to uh, some other mystery unrelated, or kind of related, and also uh, more uh, valuable minerals, things like that. If you got this game on 3DO when it originally released, they gave you a star map that you put on your wall. If you find the rainbow worlds and you mark them on the map, something happens. You actually see something on the map, and it gives you a clue to the next the next game so, which yeah. but still it was it was pretty cool to see but uh I guess uh but up here then oh so, go ahead and save here we might we might pick the game up again sometime in the future but um, um but um but I highly, highly suggest Spy Hunter. If you're into Mass Effect, if you've ever played it, uh, definitely, definitely go to the site, download it. it it's great. Uh, it took me, when I first got this game on 3DO, it took me several months to beat it because I would always kind of get stuck in a situation where I didn't have enough time to collect all the things that I needed and the game would, the game would beat me and uh, there was just no way out of it, so I would have to start over. And uh, when I beat it, when I finally complete it, and I saw the ending and everything, I can't even, I can't even tell you, man, it was, it was huge. It was a big celebration. So I was, I was really happy with it. And, I've, and I play it again and again, and it's great. Uh, the battle mode is fantastic. And uh, there's a, I don't even know if it's active anymore, but uh, the, uh, there was a petition online to get the creators to try to convince Activision, they're the ones that are actually own the company now, uh, the company is called Toys for Bob, by the way, uh, that uh, to get them to make Star Control uh, 3, the real Star Control 3, because there is one out, but it, uh, but it, it, uh, it, 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 it was not a real sequel. But, uh, but also another fun tidbit, Toys for Bob, company that made Star Control 2, they are also the ones responsible for Skylanders. So they actually made Skylanders, all, all of them, all the toys, everything. So they're more or less responsible for the 
toy to game, game to toy revolution. So it's uh, really interesting that they would make a game like this and then be connected to that. But hey, you know, that's that's their gig. But uh, other than that, let's see, what uh, what are we playing on? Uh, did, did we decide that? On when? Okay, retro. We're gonna finish up uh, Lester Master? Yeah. Try to beat it and then it like real quick, like not that far. So we can go ahead and try um, Guardian Legend also. Okay. If, we'll try to finish Blaster Master first. Okay. So yeah, uh, Wednesday. Uh, uh, we are we're actually not doing the Telltale Tuesday uh, stream anymore. We'll do a, a stream of something, but. Quite sure what's going to be yet because we're actually going to start doing um, pre recorded reviews of the Telltale games that we play because it seems like it's a little bit better than showing the entire story to somebody on a stream. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you see us on Tuesday, check it out because uh, we're still uh, we're not sure what we're going to stream, but it's going to be something good. But, uh, good. All right, well, thank you very much, Spy Hunter. We always appreciate seeing you in the uh, the chat. And uh, we'll see you hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday or uh, holidays. Uh, also, Thursday, Resident Evil. We're going to be finishing that up. Resident Evil 3, we're at the halfway point. Yeah, we should finish that up. And if you have any questions or ideas, like, say, you really want, like, Star Control 2 laid out, like, story mode the whole way, that. Yeah, that'll take a while though. <laughs> so, but all right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good night. Spy Hunter. Uh, no game I never played. Spy Hunter. <laughs>